God our King, and Jesus Christ the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Well, happy Independence Day weekend. Are you all getting ready to excite, uh, to enjoy some beautiful time together with family? Well, this is uh, Independence Day, July 4th weekend, and this is a time when we celebrate as a nation our uh, great independence, right? Declaration of Independence, 1776. You know, I watched a video uh, the other day on YouTube where a guy was going around San Diego uh, beaches interviewing people to see what we have independence from. Did you see that one? Or he asked them and, and they say, uh, from China? From the Nazis? Maybe it's victory over the South? And they said, they said when was it signed? He says, 1875? <laughs> So it's good that we celebrate today and know what we're celebrating, right? Independence from Great Britain. And we're celebrating the freedom to be our own country, to elect our own leaders, freedom to worship as we please. All these great liberties. And that's fantastic, isn't it? That we celebrate this independence. But I'll tell you, there's one thing we do not want to celebrate is independence from God, right? What we need to celebrate as Christians is Dependence Day. Amen? And this is not once a year, it's all the time. Dependence upon God. And that's what I'd like to talk with you about today with respect to our country, the church, us as individuals. Happy Dependence Day. Happy Dependence Day. So what's God say to us about depending upon Him and trusting in Him as our Savior and Lord and King? Well, first off, as we think about this, um, I'll tell you, there's no individual and no nation or country that's ever stood or lasted for long that depended upon itself and not upon God, right? Let's listen to what God tells us here in Jeremiah chapter 17. I'll open and start there. God, it says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He's like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good cup. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He makes he is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. And he doesn't fear when the heat comes, for its leaves remain green. He's not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. So, as individuals and as a country, who are we to rely upon? The Lord, to depend upon Him. It never goes well when we don't depend upon Him. And we've had this trouble, really, with independence ever since who? Adam and Eve, right? They declared their independence from the Lord, and it didn't go well for them. Out of the garden they went with a guardian chair to guard the way to the tree of life, lest they should return. And we've got this independence in all of us, doesn't it? Don't we? That we want to just rely on our own flesh, Rely on our own wisdom, rely on our own strength and insights, and depend upon ourselves. It doesn't go well. Israel had this problem all throughout history. You look at the course of the Old Testament, they were always going back to lean on Egypt. And God says, why will you lead on Egypt? It is a reed that pierces the hand of anybody who leans upon it. Woe to those who go down to Egypt, says the Lord in Isaiah 31 for help and rely upon horses who trust in chariots because they're many and in horsemen because they're very strong. Do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. The Egyptians are men but not, and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out His hand, the helper will stumble and he who is helped will fall and they will all perish together. So, does it sound like a good thing to declare independence from God? Never a good thing. It's wonderful, though, to lean upon Him. For some boast of chariots and some of horses, but we boast of, who knows it, the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. I want to ask you a question. How's America doing today? Do we trust and rely upon the Lord? <laughs> if I take out a coin today and it says, in God we trust, that sounds fantastic. But do we live up to it? No. On our coinage? We've got a lot of great Christians in this country, and I'll tell you, I met a woman from France um, this last week on my boat. She really inspired me, again, in America. She had this American t-shirt on, she's a French citizen, but she had come over to America 
and she's marrying an American citizen, and she loves America. Everything about it. She says, in France, if there's terrorism, people don't care as long as it doesn't affect them. She says, they're lazy, no one cares, sort of godless. She says, over here, there's a spirit of courage and bravery and rugged American individualism and, and a spirit of passion about life and optimism. She just was so in love with America, and after two hours, I was like way more in love with America than I have been for some time. Because <laughs> I've looked at this news and it depresses me, but she was so in love with the spirit that's in America. I thought that was great. But I'll tell you, where does our spirit come from? And where should it come from? It's not rugged individualism that we are relying on our strength and our wisdom and our, our, our majesty, but on God. That's where it started and that's where it needs to be. At least that's where I hear it started. It never goes well to rely upon yourself. Assyria uh, was God's rod of anger against Israel, and yet when they trusted in themselves, God came for judgment. In Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar was used by God, but at the end of 12 months, he was on the roof of his palace, remember, and he says... Look at all this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal de at residence and for the glory of my majesty. And while the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven among men until you learn that it's God who decides these things, and he gives to the kingdoms of the world, he gives the kingdoms of the world to those whom he will. So, it's never good for someone to rely and depend upon himself, better to rely on God. What do you think about our ancestors, our forefathers in this country? Did they have some understanding of this? Listen to these words, if you will. George Washington said, It's the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, to humbly implore His favor and protection. Wouldn't you love to hear that from the President today? James Madison said the future and success of America is not in this Constitution, but in the laws of God upon which the Constitution is founded. Does that sound like dependence upon God? You remember Ben Franklin, not known for his Christianity, by the way, when the Constitutional Congress was getting together to write our Constitution, they couldn't come up with it. Roadblock at every turn. No progress. Until Franklin, Ben, good old Ben, stood up and said, In the beginning of our contest with Great Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayer in this room together for divine protection. Our prayers were heard, and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in that struggle uh, must have observed the frequent instances of superintending providence in our favor. To that kind providence, we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future nation, national happiness. And have we now forgotten that powerful friend? <laughs> or do we imagine that we no longer need his assistance? What about America today? Have we forgotten? Yes. Relying upon our Lord and God and King? Abraham Lincoln in his day says, in the Civil War times, we have forgotten God. We've forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And then we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we've become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God who made us. So it seems to me that, you know, this is not a new thing in our generation. It goes back to Lincoln's day, probably goes back to the revolutionary days, but in God we trust to rely upon Him. And that's what God calls us to do, especially as a church and as individuals as well. Again, I just love that woman that I spoke with about her love for America. It's not that we're not to use our Yankee ingenuity and go after and, and be rugged individuals, but rugged individuals who lean upon the Lord. So what's it mean to, to depend upon God, to trust on God? Happy Dependence Day. What do you think? What's it mean to depend upon? Well, there was a uh, guy that was a um, missionary to the South Pacific Islands. His name was John Patton. And he was trying to translate the word believe into their language. And he couldn't come up with anything because they don't have a word for trust in that 
in those days in that language. And so he finally came up with this. When the Philippian jailer said to Paul, what must I do to be saved? He translated it like this. Lean your whole weight upon the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. What do you think? Does that sound like a good explanation of, of depending? Lean your whole weight upon him? I want to ask you right now. Do you lean your whole weight upon the Lord in your heart as you go through life? Luther says you should work as if everything depends upon you, but trust as if everything depends upon God. This is easier said than done. Amen? Amen. You can all say yes right now, right? Say yes. yes. Now, can you do it? It's a lot harder, right? I remember the story I found of uh, Charles Blondin. He was a tightrope walker in the 1860s, and he went to Niagara Falls, right? And there's a thousand-foot tightrope. He walked across it multiple times to the amazement of the crowd, like great cheers. Then he said, now I have a question for the crowd. Who believes that I could actually carry a man on my back across here? Well, we've seen you do it many times. They all agreed, yes, you can. He said, you, step forward. <laughs> No, 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 I'm not going. I'm not going. Would you? Well, you know, it's a big difference between saying, I can and should really my whole weight on you, but I don't know if I really trust you to do it. This is what God wants us in our lives, and as a country, and especially as a church, and as people, to lean your whole weight upon it. Because guess what? This guy, Blondin, I wouldn't have gone either. He might have fallen. He's just a human being. But God, he will never fail. The very middle verse of the entire Bible, what is it? Psalm 118, verse 9 says, It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Isn't that beautiful? Is the Lord reliable? Is He trustworthy? He's shown Himself 100% in every case to be trustworthy. Daniel was thrown into a, a terrible situation in the lion's den. He had no way out. He couldn't rely on his own strength, his own wisdom, his own insight. And yet, what do we read? Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of hurt was found upon him because he had trusted in his God. He had leaned his whole weight upon the Lord. God puts situations in our lives so we have to lean on him, doesn't he? I mean, he puts affliction upon the righteous and upon the wicked and he's testing us to see, will these people, will my people lean their whole weight upon me or will they go back to the arm of their flesh? He puts upon us finances sometimes little difficult situations. I think of Beth and her surgeries where she's going into surgery for brain surgery. She's going to have a piece of her skull taken out. And she has to go into there trusting that the Lord is going to bring her through and be the good physician, the great physician. And um, God says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will. Make straight your paths. Have you felt that and seen that in your life? Man, I have seen it in a million things, from best surgeries to finances to preaching. Sometimes, like this last week, vacation Bible school, you know, very little time to prepare everything and a lot to do. And sometimes I got up there having prepared, but you know, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to say, but I'm standing up and here are the kids, and I'm just available. And boom, who comes in for me? The Lord. He just puts the words in my lips. And... Leaning on Him, He never fails you. Of course, we don't always lean upon Him as we should, but I liken it to those days on the tall ships when I was up about 70 feet off the deck, and sometimes you have to do work up there, and you get on this bosun's chair. Anybody been on a bosun's chair? All it is is a piece of wood with some strings, you know, ropes off of it. And you're 70 feet up, and you have to sit on the chair and lean your whole weight upon it. I'll tell you, when I do that to start out, I'm holding on to something else. Okay? I lean and it starts to sink down and sink it down a little bit. Eventually I see it holds me up and then I let go. And then I'm up there for several hours and my faith grows and I get very relaxed in the chair. You know, I think our lives are the same way. Sometimes, you know, our faith is not so strong. But God puts us into a situation where we have to get on the chair and we find in time it holds us up. And then we get more and more confident in it. That's what God wants for us with respect to Him. For happy is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. So, what should we rely upon God for? What does he want? What kind of a relationship does he want with you and me? 
Well, I would look here into our catechism. Consider the Apostles' Creed. What kind of relationship should we have with God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. What's this mean? I believe that God's made me. He's made all the creatures. He's given me my body, soul, eyes, ears, members, reason, senses. He still takes care of them every day. He gives me my clothing, shoes, food, drink, house, home, wife, children, land, animals, all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards me from all evil. And all this out of a fatherly, <coughs> divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness, worthiness in me. For all this, it's my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. When I have a tough situation, sometimes what I like to do is get up high and pretend I'm in an airplane. And I look down and I'm like, oh my goodness, my house hasn't sold yet, right? How am I going to do the finances and stuff? You know what I think? I just get in an airplane in my mind. And I, think, I look down and I see all these people in all of Florida. And I think, God is over all this. My, I'm a little tiny speck. This is nothing for him, right? Then I go up a little higher into space. And I look at the stars and I think of all this. And God puts billions of lights in the sky in a single day with but one little breath of his, coat, in, of his mouth. And I think, surely he can handle this one, Right? He does this all out of a fatherly love for us. We can lean upon Him and trust in Him. For He says, Can you lift up your voice to the clouds that a flood of waters may cover you? How about you? Can you send forth lightnings that they may go and say to you, Here we are. Then, if you can't do these things, then I, I will also, if you can do these things, then I'll also acknowledge, acknowledge that your own right hand can give you the victory. Who puts the lightnings here and there? Who sends the waters from above? Who has the deep and storehouses? Who uh, has the place for frosts and mountains? And, and who holds the days in his hands? It is the Lord. He is one in, upon whom you can rely. He opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. You ever think about slugs? Let's go small now for a second. Does God take care of slugs? I saw one the other day. It's kind of disgusting. It's moving across the sidewalk out here, leaving a, a trail of slime behind it. And yet God cares about that little creature. And for pigs, and for flies, are you not of much more value than these? Will he not care for you, O people of little faith? I say that to myself as well. God says, rely upon me. My goodness, I take care of slugs, I'm going to take care of you. Trust in me. As Bishop Bradford, an Episcopal missionary in the old days, was going to China, as Trump would say, China, right? One night, he, he's compelled to sleep outdoors. <laughs> right, yeah. I love the way he says that, right? Or maybe you don't, whatever. But the hotel keeper said, you've got to be careful, there are marauders, there are muggers, there are killers out here in these woods. And the bishop couldn't sleep that night until this verse from Scripture came to him, Psalm 129. 121, he remembered, he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And the bishop said at that moment, he said, Well, Lord, you neither slumber nor sleep. There's no use both of us being awake. And he went peacefully to sleep. Because you, God, are the one who watches over me. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will keep you from evil. He will keep your life. Guys, do you stay up at night sometimes afraid of things in life because you're not trusting that the Lord is going to do it for you. I think we all can say that. But there's no use in both of us being awake. God is awake. He's your shade. He's your keeper. He'll keep your life. Your times are in His hand. Go to sleep. Let Him take care of it. He is faithful in all things. And then secondly, let's look at this other part of the article. The second one. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, etc., was crucified, died and buried, rose again, etc. What does this mean? It means I believe that Jesus Christ, true God and man, begotten from the Father from eternity, is born of the Virgin Mary is my Lord. He's redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all my sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver or, or such things, but with His precious, holy, precious blood, with his innocent suffering and death, so that I might be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Do you believe that? 
Do you lean upon that? That Jesus truly has forgiven you your sins at the cross. That God accepts that as the sacrifice by which you are now atoned for, saved, reckoned as righteous. Or are you going around afraid and moping about in your sins still? If you're crossing the Niagara Falls like Charles Blunt and walking back and forth across this raging river of death, will you get back on Jesus' back and let him carry you across? Say amen. amen. Now he says, now which of you will get out of my back and go with me? Will you go? Climb on his back right now by faith as a matter of your heart. Lean upon him for the forgiveness of your sins. For he truly, his precious blood atones for them. Thus says the Lord. And at the end of Pilgrim's Progress, remember Christian and Hopeful? They're almost to the gate, almost to the gate of heaven. They see it to the celestial city. But we read, he says, Now I saw further that betwixt them and the gate there was a river. And there was no bridge to cross over. And the river was very deep. And at the sight of it, Christian and Hopeful were stunned. They were sore afraid. And the men who went with him, the angels, said, You must go through or you can't come to the gate. Well, they asked them if the waters were all of the same depth. And they said, no, uh, yet we can't help you in that case. For you shall find it deeper or shallower as you believe in the king of that place. Wow. Then they addressed themselves to the water. And entering, Christian began to sing. You know, sing all of his sins. And crying out to his good friend, hopefully, he said, I sink in deep waters. The billows go over my head. The waves all go over me. But then said Hopeful, be of good cheer, my brother. I feel the bottom, and it is good. How about you? You are all going to have to cross the river of death one day. Those raging waters underneath that tightrope. Will you get on Jesus' back to carry you across? You know what? Our sins can sometimes terrify us. But I tell you, if I'm hopeful, I will say this to you. I feel the bottom, and it is good. God's salvation is sure. You can bank on it. I'll tell you something. He's never lied in his whole life, which is, by the way, eternity. He's never failed his people once, which is, by the way, the history of the world. His track record is 100% success. Our dear brother Eric Fraser went home to be with glory in God just this last week. He says to you, the ground is good. I felt it. Be hopeful. Will you lean upon the Lord for your salvation today and let the peace that passes all others understanding come into your hearts through the forgiveness of your sins, through His precious shed blood for you at the cross and His glorious resurrection? God won't fail you. The Lord is my strength and my shield, says the Psalms. In Him my heart trusts and so I'm helped and my heart exults. With my song I give thanks to Him. The Lord is the strength of His people, the saving refuge of His anointed. And finally, we got the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, etc. What does this mean? I believe I can't by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. The same way He calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies the whole church on earth, keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, He daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, He will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Is that most certainly true? Will you climb on the back of the Holy Spirit, on the wings of the dove of peace, and let Him carry you through life? Daily and richly He forgives your sins. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you, as does our Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't either. Nor God the and one more story, that in England, Oliver Cromwell, if you ever heard of that guy, he had an ambassador who went on some great business one day, and, and he was very afraid because there were many enemies threatening all around to destroy him, to kill him. He couldn't get any sleep at night in his room. He was afraid someone would come in and steal and destroy his business. Well, his servant said, why aren't you sleeping, my master? I'm worried that this won't come, this, something ill fate will befall us. So his servant said to him, Oh, Master, was God in charge of this world before we were born? Well, yes, of course He was. Will He be in charge of this world long after we're dead? Well, yes, of course He will. Well, won't you give the present to Him too, Master? And at that, He said, You're right, my servant. And He fell asleep. 
I'll tell you something. The Holy Spirit doesn't leave you. If he's ruled the world in days past, and he rules the world in the days future, why do you doubt him to rule the world today? Right? You got a health issue? He rules the world today. You got a financial issue? He rules the world today. You wonder about the forgiveness of your sins? He applies Jesus Christ to you every day. Let him build you up. The wings of that dove bear you across of life's raging streams. For the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man who takes refuge in him. So, conclusion here. I want to say to you, happy Independence Day. Have a great barbecue. Celebrate our independence from Great Britain. That's fantastic. But let's never, ever celebrate independence from God. But rather, happy Dependence Day to each of you. And especially that forever, every day in Jesus Christ. In his name, amen.